Hi everyone, the baldest man on YouTube here bringing you another scientific-ish diptyque review. If you don't know me or haven't seen my videos, I'm doing a series on the science behind how perfumes affect our physical and mental health. And today I'm doing a review of the fragrances in Diptyque's premium Les Essences line. So let's get into it. Hi, my name is Alexi. I'm a bald millennial gay man with a PhD in cultural history that I'm trying to weaponize in the fight for the greater good. I do research in lots of different topics, mostly related to queerness, mental health, and obviously perfume. If you like what I do, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out and all support is appreciated. So as I did in my last video, I'm going to be going through each fragrance in the line, looking at the primary notes and looking at scientific studies about what those notes will do to your physical and mental health. So the Les Essences perfumes are basically inspired by things in nature that have no smell. So the perfumers were tasked with creating a fictional smell for a scentless item. I'm gonna go in order kind of from worst to best, looking at the notes of what each perfume do. So let's begin with Bois Corset, which is meant to smell like tree bark. The notes are coffee, sandalwood, and tonka. So as I mentioned in my last video, sandalwood is of course a relaxing, kind of sedating fragrance that's gonna calm you down. Coffee, on the other hand, has an arousing or stimulating effect, just as you would guess. We drink coffee and it arouses and stimulates us. We smell coffee, it arouses, stimulates us. So we've got the relaxation of sandalwood and the stimulation of coffee. A note that's not listed here, but that you'll see listed actually on Fragrantica and other websites, and you can smell it in the background of this, is cedar. Interestingly, one study found that cedar improved the behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia just across the board. So if you know anyone who has dementia or you have dementia yourself, cedar is a note worth investing in. Um, I wouldn't say for this fragrance, personally. The biggest problem for me with this fragrance is that it is a four note. It smells like what you would imagine that sandalwood, tonka, and coffee smell like. The cedar has a sort of brightening effect. It lifts everything because the other notes can be a little bit sort of dark and heavy. But for me, there's no wow factor. It's a nice ambery gourmand. It's 255 pounds for 100 milliliters. I believe it's many, many, many more dollars. Mm, lovely, but just not worth the price point, which is something that's gonna come up a lot related to these perfumes. Let's go to the next one, Rose Roche, which is meant to smell like a desert rose. So the notes are patchouli, rose, and lemon. As I mentioned in the previous video, rose kind of goes both ways. So on the one hand, the rose and patchouli here are both giving a substantial decrease in relative sympathetic activity. So the sympathetic nervous system is related to the fight or flight response. So it's related to anxiety, basically. Rose and patchouli are both making those elements like come down by 40%. So inhaled rose induces a physiological, psychological relaxation, right? On the other hand, another article finds that rose is also an awakening fragrance. So rose kind of has two opposite effects, which sort of makes sense if you consider how versatile and multifaceted the rose is. In some ways it's very fresh and green, in some other ways it's very like dark and spicy. Just think of this as a mixed one, right? It's a little bit of an upper and a little bit of a downer. So let's go and talk about lemon, which is an unusual citrus note in fragrances. Often we have bergamot as the like star top note. I have not really seen any fragrances that have lemon as the primary top note. The science says that lemon shortens reaction time response, but it also leads to more impulsive decision making. So if you are a rash girly, if you need some time thinking some stuff over, avoid this perfume so you don't make any rash decisions. Incidentally, a rash decision might also include purchasing a full bottle of this for £255 or whatever the equivalent is in dollars because it's just not worth it again. So 2016 finds that lemon leads to increased theta brain waves, which are associated with deep relaxation, decrease negative emotions, so it will make you happier. But in addition, this is really weird. One article notes that ambient citrus aroma will also affect food choice. So this study found that people People smelling citrus had a reduction in their selection of cheese from like a table of food. So they were presented with food, but they avoided cheese. So all of my lactose intolerant girlies who just can't resist the pull of a nice gruyere or a nice brie, that's also me, by the way. If you need to keep your stomach happy, think about a nice citrus forward perfume. Overall, it's fine. There's a sherbet kind of like dusty tone to the lemon. I believe there's some like hot spices in the background above the patchouli. The notes sound like Eau Capitale and they're similar, but this one is not a sheep, it's like a floral amber. I would say that Eau Capitale hits 
more as a citrus, it hits more as a rose, and it hits more as a patchouli. Across the board, it just hits more than this one, and it's much cheaper. Let's go to Luna Maris. Luna Maris is meant to smell like mother of pearl, and the notes are incense, pink pepper, rock rose, or labdanum. So it's basically an incense forward fragrance. So the 2016 study, like I mentioned last time, showed that incense has the function of inhibiting processing of motor responses. Um, inhibitory motor responses help you stop action, so it's giving you better stopping and reaction times to things. The 2023 article shows that incense increases sleep quality. And actually, rose and incense both have this function. I'm convinced there's rose in here, even though only pink pepper is listed. Either there's a bit of actual rose or there's just a rosy smell from the pink pepper. Either way, it's worth bearing in mind. Um, out of all of the perfumes, I would say that this one feels the least substantial. It feels almost unfinished, like I would have to layer this with something else. It's like a very kind of like close, musky, neutral, peppery, spicy scent. It's kind of an amber, but it's not really an amber. But again, for the price point, no. So let's go to the next one, Lily Fair, which is meant to smell like a lily. The notes are violet leaf, cardamom and vanilla. As I mentioned in the previous video, vanilla is relaxing, it decreases your heart rate, you have longer response times when smelling vanilla, and it also gives you perceived introvert emotions. So it will make you see people as more introverted and possibly standoffish. So, but it will relax you. Cardamom is interesting. According to the 2016 study, it was associated in a decrease in skin temperature and it has a relaxing or sedating property. So just like vanilla, it will relax you and it will like cool your skin down, which is quite interesting. This one out of the group is the most singularly relaxing, which makes sense because lily pads are incredibly relaxing. It basically, to me, smells like a very green, galbanum heavy version of Dior's Hypnotic Poison, which I absolutely adore. What you get is this kind of skin like musky musty vanilla with a bit of like a sweaty vanilla that you get in hypnotic poison but then you have this like green ozonic bubble around the perfume with um lily fair it's lovely it's just not worth the price try before you buy maybe it's better on your skin but i'm not selling this one to you either. However, the last one I am selling to you, Corail Oscuro, I don't know, is meant to smell like living coral. The notes are mandarin, rose, and a salty mineral accord. So we have mandarin in the top, that's a citrus. Obviously mandarin is going to partially give you the kind of energizing, positive, cheese avoiding properties that lemon and other citruses give you, but it's a little bit more chill. The 2023 article shows that mandarin oil inhalation increases sleep quality. So people smelled mandarin and self-reported that their sleep quality had improved. There isn't much more on mandarin, but the 2016 article shows a similar relaxant effect with orange. So it says that orange will lower your level of state anxiety, it will create more positive mood, and a higher level of calmness. What's absent here is the shorter response times. If you want a kind of more relaxed citrus, mandarin or orange might be the perfect level for you. So this is actually the only one that I bought. It smells just amazing. Oh. So good. I want to also talk about how cute these little bottles are. So they have these little miniature 10 milliliter versions of the 100 milliliter bottles. These are absolutely adorable. Can we also talk about how much serotonin is released into your brain when you see a miniature version of something? I don't know what it is. I think it's because I know that this is a mini version of something else. It just makes it so like I could like, mm, like it just, I love it. This is amazing. It's unique in one respect. I've never smelt anything quite quite like seawater. I know that sounds a bit gross, but it does smell like mineral, salty, rock, aquatic. At the same time, it's very, very green. There's something in here that smells like ripped open root vegetables or like chili almost. I've seen some reviewers say that it smells like salad, but it does in the best way. There's definitely something fresh and like vital and green about this perfume. The rose is really abstract. It's almost like the, the greenest parts of the rose have been like amplified and are kind of like shooting out. It's really, really gorgeous. Weirdly, at the same time, it's also like a real crowd pleaser. It gives me like a late 90s, early noughties vibe. CK1, Isimiyaki, those kind of green, aquatic, unisex crowd pleasers. There's not much in the base. It is a little bit linear, but this 
is the only one that I would possibly buy a full bottle of. If you have any um, different thoughts, please let me know. Please write a comment. Do you really like any of these in the Les Essences line? Do you like Bois Corset? Do you think that Coral Oscuro is terrible? In fact, Coral Oscuro actually has quite a bad rating. I think it's put quite a lot of people off. And Bois Corset is really very easy to get into. It's a real crowd pleaser as well. So if you disagree with any of my rankings, please let me know. Um, there are no scientific studies for the notes in Lazulio, unfortunately. Also, I have just done a video on some Fragrantica drama surrounding Lazulio's release. A deep dive into the comments of that. So if any of you messy girlies are interested in that, I will leave a link. So I have to say, I'm not a scientist. If you are a biologist or you know more about this and you see that I've made mistakes or misunderstood anything, please let me know in the comments. My PhD is in musicology. I'm literally that Ben Shapiro meme when he like, you know, whatever. I'm just a collector, an interpreter, a curator of information. However, I did find all this information myself and I did decipher parts of it with Google's AI overview feature, which I think is fantastic. And I encourage you to take advantage of open access research. This is free research done by specialists, especially in a time when, let's say, some people are hoping that we're not going to inform ourselves about the, the reality of things. So open access research is really a luxury and we're lucky to have it so you can find all this stuff online and obviously i'll link it in the description below so thank you again for watching this video and i'll see you next time